Well, the greatest of these things is love, and I pray in 1 John, uh, chapter 4, verse 7 and 12, we talk about love one another. We're going to labor this again this morning. Uh, the love of God is not easy. It's not easy. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, it's not spectacular. Uh, it's not spectacular. Uh, it's not spectacular. Uh, it's not I could wear a nice white suit. Uh, look flash. Uh, I could say I have a PhD. Uh, All that's easy. That's not what God wants. What's love in our hearts? It's love that will bear fruit. It's love. Yeah. So let's work on love. And not fake love. When they come through the church, and we shake hands and give a big smile, and we share When we help one another, support one another, love those in the ministry who are serving you. And those in the ministry love your people. Your people as ministers are crying out for love. So show them the love of Christ. If they're moaning and they've got someone to talk to, they need someone to talk to. Give them the time to listen to them. If there's a practical need in the church, help that person. And if you do that, there'll be no job of service for them. What well, the job of service do is they love our lonely people. They give them faith love, but they love our God will bless us. God will bless us. And purity. When the early church started, why did they conquer? Rome. They had the power of the Spirit. But also they were normal. As the people of the love. The Roman emperor and the Roman soldiers and the Roman dignity said, Look how they love their people. So, last point John chapter 15, verse 27. For the Father himself loved me, because he has loved me. He has loved me, and I believe that I came out from God. For the Father himself loved you, because he has loved me. Sorry, sorry, the John, Gospel of John. Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 27. Verse 27. You do it in the Verse 27. John 15, 27. And he also shall bear witness because he have he have been he have been with me from the beginning. So they the disciples, as the Lord was about to die and rise again, he said, He shall bear witness. What were they to bear witness about? If you remember, if you read the book of I challenge you to next week have a read the book of Acts. But if you read it, all the servants, they bear witness that Jesus died and rose again. They focus on the gospel. On the gospel. If we're going to be fruitful in ministry, there must be much gospel preaching. If you want the church to grow, if you want to plant churches, you have to be a gospel church. What is the gospel? What is the gospel? 
Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 to 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 to 24. Verse 18 to 24. Verse 18 to 24. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the people. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the speaker of this world? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So did you hear that? The foolishness of preaching and the preaching of the cross. That's what was in the text. In the text. Let's go. Let's go to Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 and 9. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 and 9. I know that we are so soon removed from him that called you into the grave of Christ unto another person, which is not another, but there is some that trouble you and will perverse the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel of heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let me be again. Thank you. So, uh, in Galatians chapter 1, Galatians chapter 1, Paul says, Though anybody preach any of the gospel, let it be in good. And if you read the whole book of Galatians, he's saying that we're not saved by the law, we're saved by Christ dying for us. And in the whole book, he spells out the gospel. If you focus on gospel preaching, God will bless you. The gospel is, John 3.16, when God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The gospel is that Christ took the punishment for my sin, for your sin. And everybody else is sick. And that if they believe in Jesus, they're saved from hell. And brought me into heaven. He so said, Jay, what well, Jason wants is a big deal. Because everywhere, the gospel is preached. 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 The gospel so the hours are about how great they are. How wonderful they are. We never hear the gospel. So, uh, getting people and slaying them in the spirit. But did they preach the cross? Did they preach Christ died for the sin? It was never the gospel. Is the wrath of God is coming? Is it that Jesus 
You must repent. For the Lord is coming. For the Lord was put upon Christ. And Christ died because he loved you. Now repent and believe in Jesus. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. That is the gospel. And that is being watered down. If you're going to be a gospel minister, if you're going to be a Sunday school teacher, if you're going to be a missionary, you must be strong on the gospel. Let us look at a verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 to 20. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses number 18 to 20. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 to 20. And all things are of God, who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the work of reconciliation. Work of reconciliation. Did you hear that? So you have been committed the work of reconciliation. That God has reconciled those in Christ. If they believe in Christ, they are reconciled. They are brought into the presence of God. They are saved from the wrath to come. You have been committed the reconciliation. That is your ministry. You are an ambassador oh, yeah. of the ministry of reconciliation. Now give the ambassador of England who was given a message by the Prime Minister. And the ambassador came here. A man that garnered high commission. But well, the English ambassador, ambassador changed the message. He will not be a faithful ambassador. You are an ambassador of Christ. And you must get a touch from the gospel. You must get change the gospel. You must proclaim the gospel. You are an ambassador. So be an ambassador. Because People out there in many churches, they want entertainment. They want to be entertained. They want the pastor to cut jokes and be funny. They want the pastor to be flashy, to be famous. And then you say, oh, we, we don't want that gospel preacher. We don't want a pastor that preaches the gospel. We want to be entertained. We want flashiness. But you are an ambassador. And you have people from the West coming from theological seminaries. And but they got bad teaching from the seminary to change the word theological seminary to a cemetery. Yeah, they go to theological seminary and it's like a cemetery. They don't come out on fire. They come out with philosophical ideas and they definitely don't want to preach the gospel. They come over here, they teach people, and then because they get a degree, and they show you the degree, but they left the gospel. My friends, never, ever, 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 ever leave the gospel. No matter how learned you are, no matter how many PhDs you are, no matter how great you are in ministry, you can never outgrow the gospel. 